we get to work with air dry clay today creating some lizards. We're going to try and make a lizard that has a long tail and four legs. There are a number of ways to do it, but everybody's going to get one ball of clay and you need to pinch off maybe like in thirds here. One third and two thirds. Save a third for the legs that we'll use in a moment. Whenever we're working with clay, there are basically three different techniques. There's coils, there are slabs, and there are spheres of clay. I'm going to work with a coil mostly today. So I've taken that ball and shaped something like a coil. And now I'm going to roll it with my hands, spreading my hands away as I roll. And this is going to be the body of my lizard. I'm going to get the tail end skinny while the head end will remain thicker. So I'm giving more pressure to the back end of my shape. Now here I have my clay about as thick as my finger. If it is skinnier than your finger, your clay will likely break. So please do not make your clay skinnier than your finger. On the front end here where my head will be, it's nice and thick. I think that's a good length. That's probably about 10 inches long. And if you want your clay lizard to be an iguana, you can roll up the tail. As I roll, I'm watching for any cracks. You might call those pinches and cracks elephant skin. I'm going to need to add any water. I'm going to need to add water anywhere I see a crack. The water plus my finger smooths things out pretty nicely. So I've rolled my tail up, but you don't have to. You can have a long and waving tail if you'd like. And my body for my iguana or my lizard is all here. I'm going to shape the head by pinching, squeezing a little. So far, so good. So I tried to make sort of a square tip to the nose of my lizard. From there I can take a skewer, press in, and pull out. It's got a bit of an open mouth now. Now I'm ready to think about my legs. I'll set my body aside for a moment and work on my legs. There are two possibilities. You could take the remaining clay and separate it into four equal sized balls. Or you could make two longer coils and attach the coils right underneath the body to make legs. But I think I'm going to try for four balls of clay that will turn into short, thick legs. Remember, if it, any part of your sculpture is thinner than your finger, it will break. So far in my sculpture process, I have not had to attach any parts, but now it's time to attach some legs. I'm going to make these into little cylinders. They will not be very thin, they'll be pretty thick. 
I'm making sure all four legs are the same size and flattening the ends by pressing them down on the table. Remember, if your table is too wet, the clay will be sticking to your surface. Here's my body. I want the tail up. I'm going to put four legs on my iguana. I could leave him flat on the table, or I could try to get him to stand up. I'm sure most, most students are going to try and get their animal to stand up. So I will take this leg and I will press it in where I want it to go and then I will pull it apart. That tells me where the attachment will take place, but it's time to use my toothbrush to scratch and attach. So I use this toothbrush to rough up the spot and to add water. That wet clay is called slip, and that combination of wet clay and scratches is what will make my attachment work. I might have to use a clay tool to make the seam disappear. If your fingers don't fit, use a tool. Same thing for my back leg. I press it in to show me where I'm going. And then I scratch it up on both sides with the toothbrush. Press. Now that slime will help me glue the leg to the body. As I work, I am thinking about smoothing the surface of my clay sculpture with a wet finger. He's standing up all right, but I want him to balance. If he tips backwards all the time, that's not going to work out. We want a nicely balanced sculpture. I could probably unroll my tail and have it sit on the ground, and that way he won't fall over. I'm forming the face a little bit more. I want to add some eyeballs. And I'll use the point to form some nostrils. It's starting to look like a lizard, although I'm going to work a little bit more and fast forward to add some texture, maybe some designs. Once your sculpture is finished, it's time to set your art on the card with your name and code. Carry your sculpture out to the shelf outside, and then it will be time for cleanup, which means taking your tools and scraping the dirty clay off of them. Put all remaining clay in a ball so that we can save that for someone else. Once you've cleaned the tools off, you can put them away, find a scraper, and scrape the dust from your table 
put that in the trash can. Afterwards, you can wipe your table with a wet rag. And if you're sitting in your chair, I may be able to give you a baby wipe for your hands and table. Next week, we'll be able to paint these.